Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to a very cold day here at Crooked Horse Rifle and Pistol out of Mark County, Mississippi. And today, I have a little bit of piece of history to show you. Let's go to the bench and see what we got. Well, hello there, friends. Ladies, gentlemen, fellow firearms enthusiasts. Welcome back to Crooked Horse Rifle and Pistol out of Lamar County, Mississippi. And today it's about 32 degrees. But tomorrow it's going to be 60 degrees. Figure that one out. But today we have here ourselves a little piece of history. This here is rifle is the Model 99 Arisaka. Now this rifle served the Jap served Japan from 1939 to 1945. The model, or also known as Type 99, as commonly referred to by the the West, is chambered in 7.7 .7 millimeter. Now, this was the the rifle commonly used by the Japanese Imperial Army during World War II and also on previous engagements with China. A little history about this rifle now. It was named after Lieutenant General Arasaka. I'm going to butcher the name now. Narakira. Arasaka Narakira. Who happened to be the original designer of the Arasaka rifle. Now the Type 99, though, he had nothing to do with the design, because he was dead. But they took the, you know, for the 99, they took design, based the basic design from the Type 38. That's how we've come up with the 99. Now, during the war with China, the Imperial Japanese Army realized that their existing 6.5 millimeter uh, that was used by the Type 38 just didn't quite have the firepower and range desired and subsequently developed and adopted the 7.7 .7 millimeter round and then developed the 99 to be able to chamber that 7.7 .7 millimeter round. Production of this rifle began in 1938 and two versions were fielded, a long version rifle and a short rifle. This particular version is the short rifle version now, the original intent was that, you know, infantry, your regular infantry troops have been issued the longer version, whereas your support, you know, uh, your logistics and support uh, troops would get the short version. However, by 1940, it was decided that the short version it would be the standard issue for all troops. Now, I suspect that uh, it did, you know, the yeah, decision was likely made due to supply of materials. Was, uh, you know, Japan being an island nation, you know, would you know was fairly dependent on other area on other countries for you know to supply the raw materials. Now, early production of the rifles will be equipped with these fold out, and you're gonna, you're gonna like this. Fold out aircraft sights. Check this out. Let's see if we can't zoom in on this. It's got these fold out aircraft sights here. Now, some say that you know the fold out sights. You know, it was more of a morale thing. You know, chances are, you know, they weren't able to, uh, nobody was able to down an aircraft, you know, with these sites. And I've never heard any, any stories or reports of any aircraft that have been taken out by these sites. Also, no, the the model ninety nine would also be equipped 
would uh, would also be equipped with a uh, with a respectable size bayonet. Let's see the bayonet, which is, if I remember correctly, about 22 inches long. Well, the bayonet was was hardly ever carried. You know, it was hardly ever carried. You know, in in a uh, like on a belt or anything. Uh, the infantry uh, typically carried it. You know, the bayonet in a fixed position on the rifle. So let's put some ammunition in this thing and do some more shooting. And the ammunition I'm shooting, it's 7.7 .7 millimeter with 174 grain. And the ammunition for this rifle is called 7.7 .7 Jap. The rifle has an internal magazine that can hold five rounds. Now I just want to say you're not going to your local big box store and pulling this type of ammunition off the shelf. So be prepared to have to order this stuff online. Yeah, these could also be fed with you know, stripper clips. However, I do not have any stripper clips available. So we got our five rounds in. We'll put the bolt forward. Now the way to put this rifle on safe now is you push in and then you rotate. You know, clockwise and that locks it in safe. So let's put our eye protection and ear protection on and see if we can't hit anything. So, I was able to you know, hit the target 65 meters. I was trying to get that 80 meter target out there, but uh, just uh, wasn't quite getting it. But uh, let's go back to the bench and talk a little more about this rifle. First, I gotta warm up my hands a little bit. My fire's smoldering out, but still puts up enough heat to warm the fingers. Much better. Now I brought you in a little close so I can show you a little bit more of the features about this rifle again we have our aircraft sights now a lot of rifles you'll find or the ones that originally did have the, the flip out sights you'll find that these little arms were broke off as the war progressed those sights would disappear the bolt, the, the lever here, it's just straight out, got your gum drop here. And this is what I talk about with the safety. 
to engage the safety, you got this ornate pattern there that you push in, rotate clockwise, and that would lock it in safe. And then to disengage safety, push in, rotate. <clears throat> now as the war, later in the war, you now the quality of these rifles would go, you know, would would go down. They would have a production line, what was called last ditch rifles. And you know, this ornate feature will be missing. You know, it just looked like just a little cloud. Lack of better terms, a crappy weld spot there. But another interesting little fun fact, I don't know if it's fact or just legend, but you have this little chrysanthemum now. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it in the video, right there. Now if you notice that it's been X, you know, X'd out. Now I'll tell you more about that. So the chrysanthemum on here was the symbol of the emperor. Let me bring this right there. So everything much more difficult when it's cold. They got the, going back to this chrysanthemum here. Let's see how well we can get in there. But again, you can see the X mark, the X, the scratch mark through that chrysanthemum. Well, I don't know how true it is, but now first let's backtrack on that chrysanthemum. That chrysanthemum was the symbol of the emperor. And with the chrysanthemum on there, it symbolized that the, this was the emperor's property. And I don't know how accurate this, you know, it is or not, but from what I've, I've read from various sources that at the end of World War II, the Japanese Imperial Army, in a, you know, to be allowed to save face, was allowed to take the rifles and either grind out the uh, the chrysanthemum or deface it. And that way, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be considered to be dishonoring the emperor. Said, I don't know how true that is. Now, if it is true, you may find some rifles with the intact chrysanthemum. Now, those rifles could either be battlefield capture, or and it's actually more likely that those were rifles that were never even issued, you know, from the factory. So, let's put some ammo in this thing, do a little more shooting, and how about we put this bayonet on it for a little coolness factor. Yeah, and this, folks, was how your, tip, your, your Japanese infantrymen will carry the rifle with the fixed bayonet and by all accounts they were very skilled with the use of the bayonet another reason that they preferred the bayonet is it was said to better even out the balance of the rifle now these rifles are very lightweight now which is uh, pretty impressive Let's see. Oh, we got something. These don't do any good unless you're on your face. Let's 
try this again. There we go, we got that 81. Got that 81 again. that one but that's okay uh, your front your front side post not sure how well we can get in here it is a fixed front side your cleaning rod if you push this button here this little release there Push that in. You can pull out your, your cleaning rod here. Now your later model rifles would have a shorter cleaning rod. In your front sight, you have your aperture right there. And again, we could adjust and put, put down the aircraft sights and then adjust for your elevation. So let's shoot this thing. Definitely a nice rifle to shoot. Let's go back to the bench. Take these things off. Hearing protection I'm using today is made by, uh, I think it's called Axe or something like that. But uh, these things just really suck. You know, I came, you know, I was one of the Came across it some time ago as a Facebook advertisement. I thought I'd give them a shot. Yeah, they're garbage. So another thing, other features with these, you know, these rifles, you know, particularly the early war version, you may come across to, you know, with a, uh, uh, with, you know, with a bipod attached or a mono, or even maybe a monopod attached to it. And also, yeah, uh, later on, you know, these things would also be changed, you know, uh, you know, rechambered in different rounds, you know, in, di in different calibers. Uh, in fact, you know, after the war and into the Korean uh, conflict, the Korean War, you know, they would take, uh, you know, U.S. forces would take the Arasaka rifle, rechamber it into a 30 odd six, you know, and uh, uh, give it, you know, and issue them to, uh, you know the uh, the uh, Korean military, 
Uh, however, there is issues with that as far as, you know, decreased uh, accuracy and dependability of the rifle. Uh, additionally, uh, Chinese forces, you know, mil the military would also, you know, rechamber it, you know, for their, uh, you know, to meet their needs as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, in this here is the Model 99 or Type 99 air cycle rifle. And I'd like to thank you for coming out and joining me in this cold day. A crooked horse rifle, miss, rifle and pistol out of Mark County, Mississippi. My feet are frozen. Now, several months ago, it was 112 degrees out here. Now, it's 30 degrees. And tomorrow, it's supposed to be like 64 degrees. But anywho, I'd like to thank uh, my new subscribers out there. Thank you for joining the channel. And for my continued subscribers that support, remember to hit that like button. Now that's the single most important way to support the channel. So until the next time, friends, stay warm and thank you for shooting with us.